Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. You know, I needed to share this morning. When I was doing my morning walk, I began to feel the sun or a light shining over my shoulder. And when I turned around, oh my Lord, my Lord, I looked up in the sky and this is what I saw. This is what my mother taught me when I was a little girl. She said, you know, the sun shouts, the sun shouts. And I began to just give God praise because I was reminded of Psalms 150 when it states in the word of God, it says, let everything they have breath Praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. I had to get my shout on this morning because the sun was shouting. Oh, for us, this is Resurrection Sunday. Oh, did you get your shout on this morning? Oh, praise be to the Lord. Oh, yes, God is worthy to be praised. Oh, yes, he is. He's worthy. I want to share what my mother said. This is a picture of the sun shouting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The sun is shouting. This morning yes it was yes it was you know i have to get that walk in because we must also keep in mind to get our physical body in shape yes our physical body must be in shape along with our spiritual body we feed our spiritual body with the word of god god word says to study to show thyself reproved unto him a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the truth praise god praise god as we now begin to look at our bible study inspiration for this afternoon brought to you by our servant leader evangelist Jared o. Praise God, praise God, as we now begin to gleam and look and see what the word have for us on this day. Let everything they have breath, praise the Lord on Resurrection Sunday. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Back to JOP Evangelistic Outreach Ministry. I'm the servant leader for this afternoon, Evangelist Jerry Doe. Are you ready for your weekly dose of encouragement? I know I'm ready, and you know what? I know you are ready as well. I know you're ready. You know what? Today is Resurrection Sunday. I know you just saw that picture as I was walking, as I previously stated, walking this morning, and I saw a glimpse of what my mother often stated, that the sun shout. Yes, the sun is shouting. You know, it reminds me of the scripture, Psalms 150, at the end it says let everything they have breath praise the lord let everything they have breath praise the lord praise god praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord you know the light that jesus talked about is even greater than the sun and when you just saw that picture of it's even greater than the sun i'm often reminded of bible scripture it speaks of here in john chapter 8 yes john chapter 8 verse 12 and it reads when jesus spoke again to the people he said i am the light of the world Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus is the light of the world. Resurrection Sunday. Yes, he is alive. He is alive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is alive. And yes, he is the light of the world. Are you letting your light shine? Are you, are you letting your light shine? Yes, there's a scripture there for that. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 5. Yes, Matthew chapter 5, and it starts at verse 16. And the word of God says, Let not your light, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine as your light shining. Today we're going to listen to our previous teaching on Resurrection Sunday. Yes, Resurrection Sunday coming from last year. We're going to see what the cross means. What does a cross mean to you in your life on this day? Are you carrying your cross? If it wasn't for Jesus dying on a cross and resurrected, we wouldn't have a cross. You know, but we have a cross too. So what are you doing with your cross? 
Are you letting your light shine? Are you letting your light shine? Are you so we're going to see, we're going to see what we can learn and glean from on Resurrection Sunday. Yes, have you been resurrected to in your life? Oh, praise God, praise God. Let's listen as we tune in to the resurrection. It is finished. Yes, it is finished. What does a cross mean to us here in 2019? What does it mean? And as I always state, are you smiling? Are you smiling? Put on that smile. Yes, your smile, it encourages. Your smile brings you peace. Your smile brings you joy. You know, that smile just may make someone else feel a little bit better about them oneself. Keep on smiling now. You know, stop all that frowning around. Keep on smiling. We praise God for you. And also, if you have, if you are new to the channel, to go ahead on and subscribe, subscribe to the channel. And also share our Bible study inspiration with others. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord and welcome back to JEOP Evangelistic Outreach Ministry. I'm your host for this afternoon, Evangelist Jerry Doe. I welcome you back again as we look at the Word of God for our Bible study inspiration. We're going to be looking at the cross, at the cross. Do you know what today is? Do you know what today is? Yes, this is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, it is. We as believers, this is a time when we when we stop and we pause, we celebrate, we give thanks anyway. In all, in all things, we give thanks all the time. But we especially give thanks during this time, during this season. For it is a resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, we know that Jesus is not here right now. But he was here some years and years ago. Many, 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 many years ago. But the Word of God is yet true. The Word of God is yet standing and we stand and then we believe and we're declaring the word of God. So as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, we're going to be looking at the cross and what the cross mean in our lives today. What the cross mean. Must Jesus bear the cross along and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Please bow your head and we're going to be going into looking at John John chapter 19, bow your head, and we're going to go into a word of prayer, and then we're going to just dive on in and see what the word of God has for us on this afternoon. Amen. Bow your head with the word of prayer, please. Most holy God, our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love, Lord God, that our God paid love, God, that you showed to us every day of our lives. Lord God, you gave, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for, for the Jesus died on the cross for our sins, Lord God. Father, we thank you that Jesus gave us direct access back unto you through the Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Get your word. I know you have your word. As I often always say, we're going to be looking at John in 19th chapter, the 19th chapter of John, verse 30. Are you there? Verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He bowed his head and he gave up to go the ghost. For Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. Before we can look at the end product of, of things being finished here that Jesus uh, finished during this particular time in his ministry, let's pause and look and see what happened in Matthew. So turn with me now to Matthew. Yes, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, looking at verse 17. Matthew chapter 3. Verse starting at verse 17. I'll be there, Matthew 3, verse 17, and it reads Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? 
And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. 16. And Jesus, went, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is God the Father saying, This is his beloved Son, for God so loved us. You know, we, as we stated earlier, we know a very familiar scripture, John three sixteen and 17. You know, we know for God so loved the world, but do we really have, we really taken time to pause and not just say it with our lips, but then be, com be convicted by the word of God. So turn now to John three sixteen, John 17, John three sixteen. 17 John 3:16 and it reads For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world through Jesus, through the Son of God, might be saved. And Jesus tells us too in John, he says also, for, I, for Jesus says, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Verse 39 and this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up. At the last day. That was John 6, 38 through 40. John 6, 38 through 40. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. He came to do the will of the Father. We know that Jesus came through a virgin birth. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. We know that. But he came also as the will of the Father. What does the cross represent to you? What does it is finished? It is finished. What does that represent and what does that mean to one as a believer, believer in Christ? What does the cross represent to you when Jesus says that it is finished? You know, the word of God, I'm, from, I'm reminded of this song too. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. No, there is a cross for everyone. And there is a cross for me. You know, I'm so familiar with that song. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? What cross are you bearing on this day? What cross have you been carrying on this day? Do you want to hear the Lord say, My well done, my good and faithful servant? Oh, God said this is his beloved son. We as believers in Christ, we as believers in Christ, we want to hear the Lord tell us, Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. We have fought the good fight of faith. As Timothy often speaks of, we have fought the good fight of faith. You know, we have a race to run. 
Are you running your race? Are you walking with God? Are you walking in obedience to the will of the Father as we run in, uh, running in this race? What does the cross mean to you? Are you carrying your cross? Let's take a closer look and see what's happening with me here on Resurrection Sunday. What is happening here? God, yes, we know that Jesus is giving us direct access back to the Father. Oh, yes, he's given us access back to the Father. The cross. Does the cross mean redemption to you? Does the cross mean redemption to you? You know, redemption is when we buy something back. When we're buying something back to redeem, we're buying something back. Jesus came to the cross, you know, for purchasing us from a life of slavery to sin. He came to set us free. He paid the price at Calvary, Jesus that is, Jesus that is, it is finished, redemption, it is finished, justification, justification is there, forgiveness is there, sanctification, having direct access back to God is there. What does the cross represent to you in your life? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is there. The pardon was paid by the blood of Jesus. Are you covered by the blood? Are you covered by the blood? Reconciliation, as I just stated earlier, is there. Jesus, he, he reconciled everything. He made everything possible back by establishing peace between God and man. Colossians chapter 1, it lets us know that all of the barriers have been removed and an intimate, we have an intimate relationship with the Lord and it's available to every believer. We have an intimate relationship with the Lord. Sanctification, it is finished. Sanctification is at the cross. Sanctification is at the cross. The moment of salvation, Jesus sanctified us. At the moment of salvation, Jesus sanctified us with his blood. Yes, he did. He sanctified us with his blood. Oh, we look at Hebrew. We look at Hebrew. Looking at Hebrew. In Hebrew chapter 13. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 12. And it says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate sanctification is the process by which the lord is continually transforming us his children into the image of jesus christ it is a con continuous process salvation is the beginning of god's purposes for believers we grow daily we grow daily in godliness we grow daily in obedience we grow daily in our understanding we grow daily in forgetting wisdom we ask god to give us wisdom knowledge and understanding of his word and for the purpose that he has for us and the holy ghost is our teacher do you have the holy ghost have you been baptized and receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, as Jesus has shown us the way he's walking, walking in the will of his Father. And when John baptized him in the River Jordan, immediately the heavens opened up. The heavens opened up. And the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove, of a dove. And the heavens opened up, and, and God the Father, God our Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom he is well pleased. And the Spirit fell upon Jesus. The Spirit fell upon him, the Holy Spirit. We must have the Holy Spirit. We know that the Comforter could not come until after Jesus completed his work here on earth. His work here that happened at the cross. It ended at the cross. So that we can live. It ended at the cross. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. We have direct access to God. We have direct access to God. As we look at Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrew chapter 10. We have direct access to God. When you get a chance to read Hebrew chapter 10 verses 19 
through 22. Amen, amen. The cross, the cross. Jesus said it is finished. You know, we have a race to run. We all have a race to run. You know, and when we carry our cross, must Jesus bear that cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there is a cross for you and for me. There's a cross for all of us. And we carry our cross. You know, the cross, there's so much thing that this goes on there at the cross. We're going to suffer. We're going to suffer as Jesus did. We're going to be lied upon. We're going to be hated as believers. He, Jesus was hated for no reason at all. Someone who was without sin knew no sin but came and to take, you know, to buy us back with the purchase of his blood. Our cross, we're going to suffer. The word of God says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God. Nobody but God. Hallelujah. Nobody but God delivers us from them all. We want the word of God to say, we want the Lord to tell us, my good, well done. My good and faithful servant. Well done. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Are you carrying your cross? Are you carrying your cross? It is finished. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. It is finished. It is finished. We have been restored. We have been redeemed. We are here for the purpose of the will of our Father. To do that which God has purpose in our life for us to do. The steps of a righteous man or ordered by God. God chose us. He chose us. He chose us. The work that we have to do here on this earth, are you ready? Are you doing the work? Are you ready to suffer a little longer? Are you ready to pray a little, a little longer? Are you ready to toil a little longer? Are you ready to walk a little longer with the Jesus until he comes back? to redeem us until he comes back again for us. Are you ready? Are you walking in your purpose? Are you carrying your cross? Are you carrying your cross? Have you have an intimate relationship with Christ Jesus? What is your prayer life looking like? What is your prayer life looking like? Are you studying the word? Are you getting into the are you getting into the word of God? Are you reading the word, meditating on the word? Let the word come in and then begin to come out. It can come out and it can help others to go out and become witnesses in the kingdom for God. Become witnesses because there are souls that's out there. As we often say, there are souls that's out there that's waiting on us. Because we're the only God that some will see. We're the only word of Christ. That the light shineth on the inside of us. The light shineth in us. It is, it is incumbent upon us to do the will of the Father, the work that he has established for us to do here during this time, during this appointed time. During this appointed time is so important. God is waiting. God has already consecrated your steps, our steps. He, the steps of a righteous man have been ordered by God. So therefore, the cross, the cross, we thank God in all things. We give thanks. We thank God, our Father. For loving us so, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ from Nazareth. And that we tell God, thank you for that we can praise him, that we can worship him, we can honor him. We can say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus reigned. He is alive. He has risen. He has reigned. He is alive. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for you and tune in with us. And you know, we um, like for you to subscribe and share. God bless you. Amen.